So my, my story um, really revolves around um, the courage it takes to go in education or other things sort of beyond what you've done. And, and um, when I was uh, 17, um, fall of 1977, um, I faced going on my first plane ride uh, to college. And uh, it was scary, like it is for almost all students. Uh, added to it was the fact it was my first plane ride, my first taxi cab. But I think it was really scarier for my parents. Um, they had no idea where I was headed. They had none of, neither one of them had gone to college. Um, they hadn't finished the eighth grade. Um, they, none of us had ever been to Massachusetts. Um, I went from complete existence in Los Angeles and Mexican-American neighborhoods to going to Harvard. Um, and so for them, it was really um, about letting a child go, but also about entering a world that they had no clue what was sort of ahead. Um, and so they took me, um, as we left our house, they took me first to the church, had a priest bless me, and then we drove to the airport. Neither of them had ever been on a plane and they put me on my first plane ride and it was very powerful and I, and I thought a lot about what gives parents like that the courage and then you know it wasn't hard for me to think about one their own journey um, to the United States as immigrants they came in the 50s and then going deeper back into their own families um, my family um, so my my mother's father um, had grown up in Ciudad Juarez, which is the border town to El Paso, and he had started the first uh, daily newspaper in, El in Ciudad Juarez um, during the Mexican Revolution. And it was not a great time to start a newspaper. Um, they, um, he'd get thrown in jail when the wrong, basically when the Federalists took over Juarez again, and he had been critical of them, they'd throw him in jail. And uh, that was a very difficult time, but, but his courage in sort of doing that and feeling it was important for what was happening in Mexico, what was happening in Juarez was really uh, quite striking. And I would hear that story from him later on when I was a young kid and we would go to El Paso to, to see him. And then on my father's side, he grew up in, in Guadalajara and um, had to start working as the principal wage earner for his family at 13, uh, driving a bus because his father had left the family to become a bracero in the United States. Um, and uh, all in the San Joaquin Valley and ended up um, basically abandoning the family in Mexico and, and died alone in Salinas. Um, and uh, though it took courage, of course, to be a bracero to, to do that, it was, you know, for my father, it ended up being that he was, you know, um, he was basically supporting his family uh, from age 13. So, I mean, each of these stories over generations is about courage. It's about going into new territories, about crossing borders that you, where you don't know what's at the other side. And so it's just a little bit of, of me thinking that, okay, I'm going to the other side of the country. It's a new thing for me. I often tell that story with, to other first-generation college students because they, they worry that they don't have the courage. Um, to make it in school, to, to do the next thing, to become, to graduate, to become professionals. What's next? Their families don't know, they don't know. And I think it's really important to kind of draw on your own stories of courage within your own families to help them kind of process that. And so that's what I try to do um, when I work with them.